It can be hard to spot every OSPF adjacency state, even if you have a couple of debugs running when one forms, which is exactly what we're about to do. And I do warn you that this is going to scroll and it's going to be several screens full of information, which we will then go back through. And we'll see a couple of OSPF adjacency states in all this output, and then we'll go through them on the board, and I'll give you a brief description of what's going on. It is an orderly process, even though on the screen that we're about to see, it does not look like an orderly process. So let's go to router three, and I'm gonna run a couple of debugs here. I'm gonna run my hello one, not debug IP OSPF jello, that won't work. Well, it might, it might get some interesting results and ADJ. This is short for adjacency. And by the way, that's actually the command. I'm not shortening adjacency. That's the one we really need to see what we're about to see because I'm about to clear the processes and we will be doing more of this as we go along. And here we go. Told you. <laughs> and it looks like we're done when you see something here at the end. We're about done. And now we're just going to start seeing hellos. So when you run debug IP OSPF hello on a normally functioning OSPF network, this is pretty much what you're going to see. You're going to see the hellos come in, you're going to see them be sent, and that's really it, and to and from. Now I have the timestamps turned off here, or you'd see that it's going to be roughly every 10 seconds, but holy cow, look at all this stuff up here. We're going back up and scroll through, so if that bothers you, cover your eyes, because here we go. So a lot going on here, and this does, even though we haven't gone too much into the debugs yet, this does give me uh, a lead into one of my favorite dad lectures, and it's a very serious one, actually. You should never practice anything on production networks, but you definitely don't want to practice debugs, because some debugs don't give you that much information, like debug IP OSPF hello. It's pretty minimal. Uh, debug IP packet, which we have not run here yet in this course, it can actually overwhelm a lab router because it's going to show you some of everything. And if it's a busy router, oh, you can actually overwhelm the router to the point where it's so busy trying to show you a debug of everything that it stops the router from actually routing. So you want to be careful, especially in production networks, and never run a debug unless you are sure of the results you're going to get and how much information you're going to get. Just got to be careful with that. So here, I did a command called clear IP OSPF process, and that is basically resetting the entire OSPF configuration that I have right now. Here's another bit of a dad lecture for you. When the router asks you a question and the prompted answer in the brackets is no, then you are about to do something pretty serious. This is obviously not something you would do in a production network. Uh, and I went ahead and said Y for yes, and of course we're in a lab environment, so it really didn't hurt anything. But then all the adjacencies start, and we see something called elect BDR and elect DR. This is the designated router and the backup designated router, and we're going over those concepts and see it action in action in the next video. But I do want you to know what's going on here. We got an election going on, and we got all kinds of ways to make that election come out the way we want to. And let's see when we start seeing, we see something about flushing network LSAs. And that would be a result of that reset I did by clearing the process. Now we see the interfaces start to go up and you start seeing hellos being sent and being received. And already here we have something called two-way communication to router two. When you are that, at that state of an adjacency, you're almost there already. And I'm going to show you all the states here in a moment, but that's a really important milestone in your adjacencies forming is two-way communication. So we see a little something here about preparing the database exchange. So we're preparing for that. Do some LSA exchanges. You see here two-way communication to 10.1.1.1, and that's to router one, state two-way. That's really good. Prepare database exchange. We're looking good. And here we start seeing other states. Here's an X start. Here's an X change. And we see some link state requests going out. Here's something called a DBD. And that's a database descriptor. We'll talk about that in a moment. And here's receiving a link state update. And what we really like to see, whether we're debugging it or not, is state of full. That is exactly what we want to see. And we go down to the bottom. That was really pretty much it. So I did a U all. So we saw some of those states, but not every single one. And here's the order of the states and a brief description of what's going on in each. And I think it's a good idea for your exam to know the order of these things. Down means, you know, hey, there's not much going on. You know, down is down. A is A. 
no hellos have been received from a particular neighbor yet, and there's just nothing really going on. Now, attempt. You will only see this stage on the hub router in what we call a non-broadcast multi-access network. And that's a fancy way of saying we're going to configure OSPF over serial connections over a cloud. And we will configure that live, and you'll see this. But again, the attempt stage, you only see that when you're configuring an NBMA network, and you'll only see it on the hub router. It's going to look something like this. And you see there with state, it's a little off because of the font. I can't make it any bigger or it'll go nuts. But attempt slash DR other, and we will see that live in action here pretty shortly. Now, the init stage, the router itself is multicasting a hello to 224.005. We know that's where hellos go. And basically, uh, I wouldn't say it's a cry for help, but I would say it's a cry for an adjacency. You know, the router is multicasting this pack and saying, hey, I'm 10.113. Anybody out there? You know, any, any other OSPF speaking routers? Well, that when they, we reach that two-way stage, when you're here, you're almost there. And I mean, of course, the adjacency is almost there. Because if you run into problems with adjacencies, it usually happens way before you get to two-way state. When we ran into adjacencies earlier with the mismatches, if I had done a debug and we were running those, we wouldn't have even gotten near two-way stage. And what happens here is that the router that received the hello in the init stage now unicasts a hello back to the source of that hello, indicating its willingness to become neighbors. So this reply is indeed a unicast. This would be coming for 10.1.1.2 and the destination 10.1.1.3. And basically it's like, hey, nice to meet you. I'm 10.1.1.2. Check my parameters out and see if you want a neighbor. And that's all there is to it. Now, if that's agreeable to the original sending router, we have something called a DRBDR election. We have to choose a designated router and a backup designated router. Once that election occurs, the exchange of link state database info can finally begin. And the router with the highest OSPF router ID, the RID, will begin the exchange and increment the initial sequence number. We talked about that earlier, and that is determined during the stage. With the exchange, we saw something referring to a DBD that's a database descriptor packet, and as you would expect, these packets contain a description of the link state database. Finally, we're almost there. When we're at loading stage, that means the routers are sending link state request packets to the almost neighbor, and when we get to full, then the router databases are synced and the adjacency has been formed. Whew. I know there's a lot going on there, a lot of theory up front with OSPF, but it's definitely worth going here, going over this again with the stages. We go down, if we're running NBMA, then you'll go to attempt, and you're going to stay there for a little while. That You usually get pretty close to that dead timer timing out before your adjacencies come up. Then you've got init. That's when the fun starts. Router multicasts a hello packet. Two-way, that means that basically by, what, what the two-way refers to is we now have bidirectional communication. Three is talking to two. Two is talking to three. They have seen each other's OSPF router IDs and they are willing to become each other's neighbors, God willing, and all those factors about the network mask and the timers match up. Then we get to start and exchange. Those happen pretty quickly, relatively speaking. Then we get to loading, we're almost done, and then finally at full, the router databases are synced and the adjacency has been formed. Now about that DR and BDR, a designated router and backup designated router, very important OSPF concept. We're hitting that next. I know I'm hitting you with a lot of theory here. So if you're new to this, take a breather, take a break. And when you're done, you've got a clear mind. Come on back and we'll get started on this designated router and backup designated router concept and see an election and process as well.